Hi everyone, it's Joa with Special Heart Studio. This video I'm going to show you how to make a stack square illusion art from cardstock with a Cricut machine. Um, this is a great project for beginners. This project can be found on my website at specialheartstudio.com where you'll be able to download the free SVG file from my Freebie Vault library. So to get started, we will upload the design into Cricut Design Space. You'll want to make sure once you've downloaded the design from my website that you've unzipped the folder. When you do that, you'll find that there will be two designs. One has, is just square, and then the one I'm going to show you today is it has rectangle in the name, and I'll review why. It still looks like a square, square but the paper that we'll use is mainly eight and a half by 11, so uh, I named it a rectangle. I uh, frequently purchase the eight and a half by 11 recollections paper from Michaels. I find it to be um, a very cost effective paper uh, and it cuts well. So I wanted to use a nine by nine frame though because of the depth that the nine by nine has versus the eight by eight was a lot uh, narrower depth. And so to make this work, I had to kind of modify my original design so that if I, if for those that wanted to use eight and a half by 11 paper, but the nice frames from Michaels that are nine by nine, that's um, what we'll show. So the project itself for will upload at a nine by nine um, size. And so from here, we can go ahead and click make it. Once we click make it, you'll find the eight, 18 <laughs> different mats. So um, if you're someone who likes to conserve paper, this probably isn't the right project, um, but it looks really pretty when it's done. And it, it look, it's well beyond a beginner type look. So the very top layer and the very bottom layer, I will cut from 12 by 12 paper. Um, that is so that my squares are nine inches square. The rest of these layers I have sized so that you would, would be able to use eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So I'm going to go through here and change all of these settings to eight and a half by 11 inch paper. Material size. One more. And then you can click continue. I'm recommending for the 12 by 12 sheets that you use a heavier weight cardstock just so that it can hold the weight um, of all of these different layers. So the eight and a half by 11, I still use the 65 pound weight, but I, I think it's probably best to um, use a heavier weight paper for the 12 by 12 front and back. Just like any craft project, uh, you know, a lot of this is what you want to do with it and customize it yourself. So if you think something else would work, feel free to try. Um, it, it may turn out even better. So we'll go ahead and cut this on medium cardstock. For the medium cardstock, I like to use a green mat. It's always best when working with cardstock to use a brayer to adhere your paper to the mat. You'll have much better results if the paper slips at all, especially on a mat that's not brand new, um, that's when tearing can occur. Now that I have the first layer cut, let's talk about removing the paper from the mat. And I say it that way because it works best if you put your mat upside down. Leave the paper as flat as possible against your work surface and gently peel the mat back from the paper. You won't have as much curling or ripping if you use this process. Um, I will go ahead and fast forward through all of these layers. My recommendation is to keep the layers in the right direction if you can when you're removing them from the mat it'll be easier to put it together. Okay, 
ready to assemble this. I tried to stack them the correct orientation, um, but we still need to put them in the right order. If you get confused while you're doing this, you can always look at Cricut Design Space to find the right direction of the square and, of course, the right order of the colors of the layers. With this design, um, the smallest little opening of the square goes on the bottom and you work your way up. I will not be using I don't even know what that's called holds holds the back the glass so it sticks out further okay so I'm going to show you how I put these together with foam tabs and try to keep them as perfectly aligned as possible little hack that um, I found works pretty well. A lot of my layered mandala and layered paper projects, I like to use the Tom Bow foam tabs. And I specifically like to use them because they're thick. Uh, this one being so many layers, I wanted thinner ones. The Recollections brand from Michaels is thinner. So this will do the trick. Um, I happen to have the circles. Uh, that pop out here. You can see some I've used um, I don't waste any of this so once I've popped out the circles I use my scissors cut this part apart cut the rows apart and use those pieces also So what I'm going to do is Place the foam tabs around the outside edges. Uh, start with the corners. I think you could probably get away with just four corners, but I don't want the paper to start getting wavy or have gaps. So next what I do is remove the tabs from just one side. Maybe I'm going to do the top here. And I'll try to show this the best I can on camera. But I take the one that I'm going to place um, and I literally make sure that the bottom, so I hold the part that's got the sticky exposed, make sure it's lined up well, and then press them down. And then I'll turn this over and pull the rest off. With this project, it's key that you keep all the layers in order in the right direction. So I recommend, you know, having them stacked up, flip it over. You can adhere your foam dots and then just repeat the process 16 times.
Okay, before I put it in the frame, I want to check how thick this is. The reason I'm checking is to determine if I would like for me to take this um, foam, foam backing off the frame. I think it's really just a personal preference. Um, I am not going to, but you, you could if you wanted more space between the paper and the glass. Okay. So on the back square, I did cut this, like I said, out of thicker cardstock at 80 pounds versus the 65 pounds that the main part is. I put some little lines that actually cut so that you know where to align this. Um, here again, I'm going to use foam tabs because I want the elevation even from this back part. I'm going to use the same process to line this up, but of course, instead of the edges, I'll use those lines as a guide. The main part's thick enough now, it stands up on its own, which makes this a little easier. Okay, that looks good. For the main front frame on this one, this one I didn't, I wasn't able to put lines. Um, I didn't want them to show. But to cover up the gaps, since we used the eight and a half by 11 paper, but I wanted to use a nine by nine frame. Um, this is, this is how I went about it. I'm going to glue this on just because I'm going to hang the pink one that I showed earlier next to the purple. I may do a couple more and put them in a quad type thing in other colors here in my craft room. Um, so I'm going to glue the edges just because that's how I did the other one. You could use foam tabs if you want that space, um, even from this top part. I was worried about the depth and how much space I had. This is art glitter glue. It's great for paper crafts. The other thing about using glue is you have a minute to, to move it where you want. Looks good. I think this will be thick enough that I don't even need to attach it to the back. Then if I get tired of this, I can change the frame out. Yeah, that's pretty thick. There we go. I thought this would be a fun design and it's easy enough for the people that have never cut paper and are interested in getting into the layered paper projects. Um, these squares are uh, a good start getting off the mat, but yet I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I have also included a true square pattern in case you have a smaller frame. My warning is just be careful if you're using form tabs, how thick they get. Um, here's a fun prototype that I did. It's, it's really cool. Um, but it gets, I used the Tombow foam tabs and I didn't put them in the middle here. Um, it, it's just too thick to put in a frame. But I, I must say it's 
kind of fun to play with. I've left it on my desk. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you have any questions, um, shoot me an email. I'd be honored if you would subscribe to my channel. Um, until then, you can get the free SVG cut file on my website, specialheartstudio.com. Thanks everyone.